Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat, one of the top mentors and moderators of chat. And today I'm gonna to introduce a very special video. Aloha Trader, who goes by Austin as his real name, one of our head moderators in chat, does a weekly Thursday webinar at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this week is episode 13, in which case he's going to talk about price action explained, a hot market, and MIC strategies. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. So, let's get to it. So today, uh, key traders is going to be a little shy because I only really had today to trade. Um, I was gone all week. I was literally flying all week and like it was really impossible to trade. And I was at the Philly event and the Wi-Fi was just horrible when the biggest day of, it was so, I mean, it's a good thing that it was the busiest day of the week, right? BPW, Yuma, we had those great runners. Um, and, uh, but like it was shitty because like the Wi-Fi was just crap and like, you know, like, you don't want to be the guy that says, oh, I couldn't, you know, I, I lost because bad Wi-Fi, right? That sounds like someone that we, some, someone that we know all too well. Like, oh, sold too quick, Wi-Fi spot, you got to get out. So I just, I, I kind of just didn't trade that day. And then I flew the next day, was jet lagged, jet lagged uh, yesterday, didn't get any sleep. Tried a quick scalp on LADS, stopped out, and that was it. So I had today to trade, and they were both losers. So that's great. So we'll go over that. Um, Market sentiment, um, I'm, we're, we'll go over that weekly. I mean, it's so much better this week than last week or the last couple of weeks. Got a couple of trader topics, a little bit review of Philly I want to go over about. Like, I don't want to go, over, we're not going to go too in-depth, just a little quick review for the people who couldn't go. Um, today, I'm going to be going over price action as it relates to strategy, and then we'll end with a Q&A. And uh, there's no guest speaker this week, but next week, we're going to have Bear on, so that'll be pretty cool. Like, I'm, I'm excited to talk to Bear. Um, he's, he's a, he's a sick guy. All right. I mean, like a sick guy, like he's like totally sick, bro. All right. So CETX. So if you guys remember what I posted in chat today about CETX, I, I kind of really up this one up. Um, I, I posted in chat, like I had my orders, like at like 230, 230, 235, 240, like 237, 247, Basically, if I just left the orders alone, it would have worked out perfectly. However, I did. I, I posted in chat once that I that I canceled my orders, right? Like right as the start of the day came over, and I saw a balance chart, and we had the same entry over here, and I had like a two twenty three cover, and I look at Bow's chat, and like his and all his buys are right here. I'm like, this app, this dickhead, this this is why I couldn't get my fills. So that was that wasn't like that was whatever. Thanks, Bow. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, like so. What I, what I was doing is I was experimenting with the I was experimenting with my orders. I accidentally covered, so I had to reshort because I didn't need to cover. But when the open came in, farmer got in. And I was like, oh, that's not ideal because the idea of this trade was supposed to be it was supposed to be a low hanging fruit play, right? But sometimes um, there can be two trades in one, right? And with CETX, um, there was kind of two trades in one, and like. I kind of canceled it because I didn't like the volume. The volume was much too high. It turned out to be um, like what I thought was going to be more than a low hanging fruit. The volume was just so strong. And, and I was like, this isn't how low hanging fruit plays are supposed to go. Low hanging fruit plays are typically, they pop up really fast. You fill some, most of the times you don't fill everything. And, and then they, and then they just fall down. This had a lot of sustained volume. And like, you notice I didn't even get like faked out up here. I didn't get tricked. I just, I just didn't want to do it, right? I canceled the order. I'm saying this is not what I envisioned, and I called it quits on the trade. Um, I just kind of gave up on the trade. It's not like I, you know, I was too big or anything. I only had the starter on. I just, I didn't like the volume. It was, I didn't feel like it was going to be the trade that I wanted it to. My other trade that I royally messed up was NATE, right? And so this was like all of my trades on it. Base. I think I had a couple of scalps past this, but like all the major trades, this is it. So I, I royally messed up in the morning, like. Um, the, the line, the pre-market line was $4 and 25 cents. And so it halted up there and I immediately just put a, a starter short on. And, and this is normally where I get in trouble is when I just put the starter on a little too early, even if it's a small starter, it, it typically means that like I'm starting a little too soon. Cause I notice with a lot of my trades, um, I always add pretty much in sequential order to my starter. So if I start too soon, even if it's small, I normally tend to start 
adding too soon as well. It's just, I guess, a bad habit that I have. You know, like if I start too soon, I add too soon. And, you know, you should just like be like, oh, I start soon. It doesn't matter where my ads are. It just tends to work out that way. So I started too soon. I ended up covering the dead top. Yes, this is me up here. Uh, I, I quickly put the short back on and I, and, I, and, I get a, and I get one good cover out of it and then it immediately pops up. So I'm kind of really over it, um, just how competitive it is. And I just give up on the trade right here. I'm like, I'm done with it. So, I, you know, I, I avoid this. I avoid covering into the stuff. I covered it for that. It did tank. And, like, unfortunately, I, I had left the cover out. I left the cover open. So, like, that's just salt on the moon right there. And that was my very ugly morning on it, right? It, very ugly kind of uh, ugly um, triangles, too. Very unlike me. But I was really restless. You know, I I had FOMO. I hadn't shorted. I, haven't, I hadn't traded in, like, a week. Like, I missed out on the Philly trades, right? You know, like I messed up CETX right before this trade. Um, so what I should have done is when when a stock halts, like there are times where you can short out of the halt and it'll immediately fall. I knew Farmer was in, so I was like, maybe this will give the tank it did. And when it kind of held, I knew I probably should have cut it over the high of day here. So that was that trade. Um, I hope you guys can relate to some of my, my mess ups. And I hope maybe some of you guys only got the good parts of the trades. Um, uh, so anyway, market sentiment this week has been a lot better, right? The SPY um, hasn't cracked yet. We had a big panic, but we did recover right in the last week or two. It's been two weeks since I've done a webinar. webinar so, but the stocks are holding the daily gaps. They're, they're you know, the, the ship with the, you know, tops had the reverse split. DLBS um, started a sympathy. I'm hoping that um, that we might get a shipper run. Like that's always fun when the shippers run. They typically it typically happens in November, um, like end of the year. But because that's just historically when it happened. But like I'm hoping that could be a spark of hope. That would be amazing if we got a sympathy sector. A lot of people who are trading haven't experienced sympathies, but like true sympathies, like um, like. A sympathy sector is when like all marijuana stocks start to go. Maybe you guys have seen the Bitcoin craze a little bit, but like all Bitcoin stocks go, all shippers go, all gold stocks like to run. And you know, it, there's always a market leader and there's a whole bunch of followers. So that's my sparks of hope. Like that's, I'm really hoping that happens. But anyway, we had a lot of runners, right? PSTV and MTC, I think were the main sparks, right? The main, RKDA was the main spark, but PSTV and MTC kind of continued it with insane 300% runs, right? Yuma was like a 300% runner. We had a lot of strong runners here. Um, workhouse, oh, that should be, that should be, Workhouse should be green, my bad. Workhouse should be green. Uh, I think the way LEDX and CETX tanked on those days were very um, negative, or not, not negative to short, but negative to uh, the market's ability to produce runners, right? Because the market can't produce runners if, if stocks tank like that all the time, right? It's good for short, but eventually it'll run. It will cause a run out of runners for shorts, right? If, if no, if there, if there eventually becomes no buyers because everything's CETXing or LEDS tanking, then there won't be buyers. There won't be runners. There won't be stocks to tank. But anyway, uh, Tell is an amazing um, multi-day runner right now. Tell is the old MPET, um, and every day I'm looking for a first bounce. The locate was really expensive though. Um, and then we just had a whole bunch of other ones. BA, I think, was the leader in large cap. It, it, went, it went up like 5% today, just totally um, ran away from the market, and it's been really oversold lately. So <clears throat> definitely some, some, good, some good vibes in large cap and small cap lands. The only thing I have negative to kind of say about this market is, like, the tanks have been really, really, really fast. And it's like, if you don't get in, sometimes there's not a lot of opportunity if, you, if, you, if you're not okay with chasing. And that's been really hard for traders. Don't, don't worry, you're not alone. It's been very difficult for everybody. Um, like the LEDS or CETX tank. It's been very difficult. And we're definitely here. And it's so funny, like, like go over my, go over my, my go over my, um, uh, other webinars and like do it in succession and it's literally following this circle like literally it's like a tanker's market a dead market we took a, a pit stop here then we're back over here and like i'm honestly i was kind of fearful i think the reason why i was short bias on nete today was because of the cetx and leds tanks i almost had a bad feeling that that might be bringing us into the tanker's market right 
like if we see like a big offering or something on any TE and like and a runner that tanks tomorrow, like or like a gapper that cracks tomorrow, I might put I bet you next week we're over here. And like next week, it's like the week to short. Right. Because like this week and last week was definitely the week to long. Yeah, right. Like, right. It totally did. It, it, like the day after. Right. The day after. And that was a sick long. But yeah, um, I'm, I, I'm totally thinking that like, let's if, if we get both like if NETE has like a, a big crash tomorrow. Or and like we get a secondary stock that just follows suit on a big tank. I think I think I, I would be pretty confident that we're over here next week. But I mean, I hope I'm wrong. Right. I like this market. Uh, the seminar that Joe and I did in Philly is only going to be for uh, um, lifetime and annual members. But I just want to go over it quick. I'm not going to go over my whole webinar. I just want to go over. This is kind of just what I talk about. I don't want ever, anyone to feel like they missed out, right? Like we're a club and I'm sure no one wants to like keep anything from, it, from anyone. So this is just like anything you might have missed. It's just I'm going to go over it quick. I'm not going to go in detail about it. But I talked about how <laughs> I talked about how um, it's very important to be a cool, calm, collected person in the room. That's basically what I try to always impress on people is that, you know, nobody comes to the market and is able to make money when they're mad. Nobody comes to the market when, when they're just frustrated, when they have, when they're out, you know, they have outside of, you know, real life problems. They're mad about the trade before, you know, they haven't reset yet. Nobody can make money. It's, it's like everybody loses money in that kind of situation. You're lucky if you make money with, with, with that kind of mindset, right? And so the way um, traders are able to, um, I, I talked about how traders have like kind of a veteran approach to trading stocks. And this is because they've, you know, been through the rope so many times. The thing that I think that you learn the, the more you're experienced with the market is how important it is to have a set of rules, right? Having a set of rules protects you in the long game because this is a marathon, not a sprint. You'll learn that the, that in order to be successful in trading, you have to be a very disciplined person. and Sometimes you're a lot, you can, sometimes you're going to ask yourself when you can deviate, like, can I deviate with my process and make money today? A lot of the times the answer is going to be yes. Right. But you don't have a process for the times that you cheat. Right. Because eventually if you cheat over time, you're going to lose. Cause that's why, that's why you have a process. So let's say you only cheat once a month. Sure. You might be able to get away with it for a very long time, but it's like you cheat once a month. Like if, if you cheat every day, you'll probably lose on by the fourth day you're going to lose I, I, like i would say by the third day you're going to lose eventually like if you just break the process you're going to lose by like the third or fourth day if you have a lucky streak right so if you cheat once a month then sure it might take four months but you're eventually going to get back the cheat days on the day that you break your process so maybe you make temporary money january february march but in april you're going to give the the one two and three days that you cheated you're going to give it back in April. So like, what's the point of ever deviating from your process? Right. So I trade, uh, like someone like bow and Alex are, the reason why they're so stern with their process is because they know they'll mess up if they don't. Right. I talked about putting risk first, and This is a concept I've talked about a lot. You want to have your risk management hat on as opposed to your gain seeking hat. Cause when you, when you try to make money in the market, you can't, when you stick to your process, you make money. It's like, when, when you, if you try to make money, you're going to lose. If you don't try to make money and you try to put the arrows in the right place, it's like, how come I'm making money, right? A, a, a little bit goes a long way. Um, you want um, you start to get a lot of desensitized to price action when, when you've been through the ropes. And what, basically what I mean by this is you get desensitized to all the noise that you don't care about, right? You start giving every single bit of information on level two credence or you, you stop giving importance to, to every little like wick you see, oh, there's a wick right there. That must mean that there's a whole lot of demand right there. Like, let me buy that, right? You start, um, you start giving less importance to every little detail that you see. And so that kind of happens. You start having, you start being a little desensitized to that. And, and, and just finally, nothing is 100% in trading, right? Like um, nothing is gonna be 100%. A trader needs to go in with the mentality that, sorry, I talk too fast sometimes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get better about it. <laughs> a trader comes into the market with the mentality that, um, you know, they, they're not shorting the death line. They're not shorting the death line because it, uh, it, it normally gives a profit. They're shorting the death line because it rarely ever uh, comes back. That's why, right? It's a risk management thing, right? And, and so um, this is, 
this is something that like I practice today, right? And this is what I want to, this is what a lot of people, a lot of people call me and they're just like, man, like I, I had a call sometime this week, man, this got so down on his luck, right? I mean, just like losing money and like, this is just like, I can't seem to, to get myself out of this pit. Like, like, and he was just like attacking himself so hard. And the thing about trading is, the market's going to attack you hard enough. You don't need trading is effing hard, right? You don't need to add on to your struggle by like attacking yourself. <clears throat> this can only hurt you, right? Um, like trading's hard. You studied and studied and studied and studied and studied, you know, and, and like, and you're just over you, a lot of times you study all weekend to come in on Monday and, and like the pressure is just on to, to, to make that winning trade on Monday. And you just, you mess up and you just like, you feel like, well, what did I do wrong, right? Like, like I said, sometimes there's a decent chance a setup's just not going to work, and you have to just let yourself. You have to let like yourself off the hook sometimes. As long as you stick to your process, what you need to be is tough on results and easy on yourself, right? You, this is like good mind, the good like management, right? For any business ever, tough on results, easy on people. We tend to always be backwards, right? Like we're always. Um, Oh man, I lost and it was, you know, I lost $500, but don't like, I mean, like I'm such an idiot for losing $500, right? You attack yourself for losing $500. Yet you don't some, a lot of times, like you might not necessarily size down, like, right? Like if you were trading for somebody else, if you were trading for a business, like an equity firm, a, a prop trading firm, um, if you were trading for a prop firm and you broke your rules, like they would let you do that like once right? Maybe twice, right? Like if you're trading them and trading their strategies, you know, they would fire you, right? Yet, you know, like we seem to be easy on ourselves, and we'll let ourselves make the same mistakes over and over and over again. And Bow had a great quote in Philly, right? If you make, if you, if you, if you make a mistake once, it's a mistake. If you make a mistake twice, it's on purpose, right? A lot of times we tend to be backwards. We're easy on the results. We don't like to change what's wrong, right? But we'll, we'll berate ourselves for losing money. And like, how can you, it doesn't really make sense, right? kind of like we need to be tough on the results and like really focus down on the results of our process and, and trying to adhere to better results and being easy on ourselves if we mess up. But, you know, if you mess up, don't berate yourself, like write it down. Say like, I messed up today. I messed up today. What I like to do is I like to um, establish outside of universe um, re uh, reinforcements to myself. Yeah, this one's a weird one. I, I, I mean, basically this just means that people, um, People were happy with this price. People thought this was a fair price, you know? But yeah, that's really weird. That doesn't normally happen. You're not gonna see it in small caps as much, you know? Like you might see it in large caps, but small caps is a whole lot of retail where all the emotion is. Um, yeah, you might see it more in large caps. But yeah, how is that? And, oh, when did it pop, by the way? When did it pop? Oh, it popped after hours though. That, that, that's also kind of cheating, right? If it pops after hours and people are, a lot of people might just say, we're going to deal with this tomorrow, right? So you might not see this. Like I bet tomorrow it doesn't go, like it doesn't go flat. And if it does, that'd be pretty weird, right? It, it's going to have some more range than this. I think this is just, I think a pop and nobody trades after hours, right? Nobody's trading. You can't, it's not a fair assumption, right? Like, like we're talking about when a stock goes parabolic when everybody's trading. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Never leaving ever, 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 ever. This is home. Never leaving. I can't definitely, I can't leave here. Like I wouldn't ever like if I marry, if I marry someone and they and like, and, and like they live somewhere else. I mean, they're, they're caving. Like, I, like, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Future wife. Like you, you're, I'm, you're caving. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Sucks for them. Right. All right. Yeah. So that was, an hour. that was like, it seems like these webinars take like, um, you know, what's really funny. What's really, really, really funny is, um, when I was in college and feel free questions, you guys can keep asking, right. Um, next week we'll have bear to, 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 to interview and or not interview, but just talk about it. But like, um, in college when I made, or in high school and college when I made presentation, or college, maybe not so much, 
uh, in high school when I was making power PowerPoint presentations and stuff like you're always like fighting so hard to like you're fighting so hard to like the it to meet the minimum there like, needs to be a minimum of 10 minutes presentation and you're fighting so hard to get to the, the minimum and now I have to find myself like I gotta make sure that I don't run out of time here I need to save some time for the Q and A and that's why like and in high school I would do all kinds of I would do college sometimes I was fighting to stay within the maximum a lot of the times but um like I in high school I would make all these animations like entry animations to, to try to delay the time and here I just like throw everything on the slide so so it goes by a little bit faster <laughs> or I won't get to everything I am 26 thanks Alex built upon Philly yeah that was kind of the goal uh, the Philly one I really liked though the Philly one was kind of like I guess I don't want to like I talked about like basically the the heart of my mentality of of being a trader is you got to keep that mental clarity just in just intact oh yeah yeah it, it should be good um, it should be a, I mean like a good I, the audio I think is was was recorded well but yeah how's that CRM anyway any other questions uh, thanks Tom Cash. Um, sorry. For an A plus short setup, what's the maximum you're willing to pay a share? I mean, it depends on the range. Like I was locating beyond for like 12 cents a share or something like that, right? But beyond like a 200 share stock. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right. See you guys.